Wow, what a wild world we live in today, huh? For us humans in modern society, sheer survival sure can feel like a bit of a challenge at times, but full-on extinction is a very common and very serious threat to thousands of species these days as a result of human development, logging, pollution, habitat loss and fragmentation, and a plethora of different impacts relative to anthropogenic climate change. Basically because of the many things we're doing as a species to survive without considering the impact of our actions on everything else. Now, whether or not a species is listed as endangered is determined by a few different factors, such as a population decrease of over 70% in a limited geographic range and the probability that that population is going to go extinct being at least 20% in the next 20 years. When a species is considered to be critically endangered, it's when they've had a population loss of over 90% with a 50% probability of going extinct in 10 years. In all these cases, the two biggest contributing factors to a species going extinct is habitat loss and limited genetic variation within the population. But what if we apply that same logic to ecosystems? See, ecosystems like this one here are considered to be an old growth forest based on the highly adapted terminology of a forest over 250 years old in this area, although in some regions being only 140 years old qualifies, despite this being a virgin forest ecosystem that has never had any major human developments, modifications, or alterations with big, amazing western red cedar trees like these two here, which are well over 600 years old. These ecosystems are a rich medley of all sorts of different plants, animals, fungi, bacteria that are all completely unique to these specific populations all depending on one another to create healthy functional habitat for one another. Everything from these ferns and salal and huckleberry here to the cyanobacteria and the lichen way up there in the canopy. And while we've identified about 1.2 million species on this planet, ecologists like O.E. Wilson, rest in peace, estimate that there are between 5 and 100 million different species that we still haven't even identified yet, let alone understand what they do, how they live, or their place within these intricate, complex ecosystems. Influenced by glaciation and large-scale climatic changes, these forest ecosystems have evolved over thousands of years to reach this state of maturity and biological complexity, and even if we were to cut them down, replant them, and then wait 250 years for it to be an old-growth forest again, this specific mix of species in these ecosystems would likely never return as it is, and even if it did, it would take thousands of years to reach this state of maturity, which in short human timelines basically means that once they're cut down, they're gone forever. They're extinct. The temperate rainforests all across the globe make up less than 0.2% of all the land mass in the world, which means that their geographic range is already pretty dang limited to begin with, and ones like this, with this specific mix of tree species, down to shrubs, mosses, bacteria, fungi, insects, and all the other critters here that call this place home, only exist here in this bioregion and nowhere else in the world. Currently in BC, the high productivity old growth forest that remains is less than 2.7% of its original extent or population, or less than 1% of all the forested land in BC which when compared to the endangered species definition falls into the extremely critically endangered category. Heck, I mean, even if we use the BC government's own publicly available stats that include all the different types of old growth forests in the province, that's still only 18% remaining, which is still significantly less than the endangered species listing of 30% for a population in a given area. In the United States, things are just as bad if not worse, as centuries of land privatization and capitalism has encouraged the rampant destruction of these forests for individual gain, and with loose definitions, there's still not a truly accurate measure for how little of these high productivity forest ecosystems remain. However, a recent survey in the states that took into account all the various types of forests from the remaining red ones in California to bogs and low productivity high alpine forests in the Rockies suggests that there's less than 18% old growth forests remaining across the entire nation, again, which is far less than the endangered species population listing. These remaining ecosystems are currently facing ongoing habitat loss with development and ongoing logging that clear cuts these forests and places them with a limited variety of pre-selected tree saplings planted solely for commercial benefit, which not only reduces the genetic variation within the tree species of our forests, but it gives virtually no chance for the diversity of less economically viable species to become established and add to that diversity, such as slow-growing yellow cedars or Pacific yews, or trees like red alder which are crucial for creating healthy forest soil for their nitrogen-fixing properties. Additionally, this takes in no consideration for the myriad of different organisms that exist in these forests from single cell protozoa in the soil to different species of fungi and insects, of which we still have no idea how many there really are or their place within these ecosystems or whether or not they'll ever be able to come back. Despite all of that, old growth logging continues, albeit reduced in the past few years, with the big corporate players biding time with pleasantries, greenwashing, and distractions until they can get a chance to log at all, which is why it's so important that we do all we can to permanently protect and work within these remaining intact forests ecosystems now to preserve not only their ecological function and biodiversity, but their cultural, social, recreational, and spiritual significance. 
Now let's take a moment here and consider the bald eagle as an example and its cultural role or significance because it was once listed as an endangered species. See, the herbicide DDT was found to be creating really thin eggshells that led to limited reproduction, but after banning the use of DDT and years of restoration and rehabilitation, they're everywhere now. Can you imagine a world where we had just let bald eagles go extinct because a few big companies were making money off a product that happened to kill them? I mean, heck, and that was a ban that went against chemical industry giants like Monsanto, so if it's possible there, then why not with the publicly owned logging companies behind all this forest degradation. We've done it in the past and we can surely do it again. Let's not let these forests go the way of the dodo and instead work to find solutions that keep these ecosystems intact to help mitigate the impacts of climate change, stabilize our soils, protect us from wildfires, host all this amazing biodiversity and continue to be the backbone of the culture we live in for generations to come. Mm -hmm.